Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues with our next Nike Hot Seat guest. He is the head coach of the Jackrabbits, the Jacks, if you will, at South Dakota State University, Chris Bono. Chris, welcome back. How are you? No, I'm doing great. Everything is uh, rolling along. How are you guys doing? We are good. We're very interested in what is indeed going on with the South Dakota State Jacks. And i gotta, I got to tell you, first of all, well done. Uh, the score with the University of Iowa may not tell the whole story, however. Um, I'm talking about the rebuild of this program, the introduction of this program to a much higher of that, uh, a level that you and John Reeder have, have imposed on this program, and, and they are responding well. Can you talk about first just your position on your squad? Yeah, we're excited. Um, it's been, you know, this is our fifth year there, and it's been a, a work in progress for sure. And, um, you know, all four years uh, that before this have really been pointing towards this year and next year. Um, in my in my plan, when I interviewed, when I when I uh, in my my manual that I have uh, to how to rebuild a program and how to how to uh, take a program that was struggling to uh, to um, ensure that we're going to have success. Uh, this is year five in that program, and this is the year we're supposed to be able to develop kids and uh, put them on that all uh, on that podium and try to have national champions. Um, we know it doesn't happen overnight, and I do have a five-year plan, and it's, uh, it, it seems to be working, and it's come to fruition that uh, this is our year to be able to, uh, that we should be able to put all of uh, have all Americans out there. It's like a flower in the springtime just opening up little by little. The petals start showing their colors, and you showed your colors against the University of Minnesota. It was a loss, but a tight one. 17, 18, coach. How was, what was the, what was the emotion that was going through you, uh, your head and heart at that, uh, that time on the 19th of November? Well, it, it was, it was a little bit of everything, you know, we knew we could win if we went up there and wrestled well. Um, uh, we didn't win, uh, but we were winning the whole match. So it was a, a whole ebb and flow of, um, of emotions going through us. And then at the end, the way we lost, uh, you know, uh, one of our guys got disqualified at the end to lose the duel. Um, I hurt for the kids. I was hurting for the fans. I was hurting for the program. We had beaten them in 48 some years, and uh, we had about 500 fans taking. You know, we took a bus up there, a fan bus, and um, you know, it just hurts for the kids that have really bought in and really believed that this was our time to get them. And uh, but you know what? I was proud of their effort, and I was even more proud of um, how they got back on that bus, got home, and got back to work, knowing that March is our goal, and uh, that we needed to prepare for the next week. And uh, you know, with Iowa coming in, so. Uh, it was it was good, and we know it was November and December, and uh, March is the final goal for us. I love I love the growth, coach. Let's move to the second of December. We showed even more growth. The score perhaps was not indicative of that growth in a loss of eight to twenty nine. What did you learn about your team? Uh, we've got some fighters. You know, we've got good kids, uh, and that's what's 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 so exciting. Um, they showed up against Iowa and they responded. They wrestled, they wrestled. I won't say they wrestled great, but they wrestled well. And, you know, we went back and watched the film and we, in four matches, you know, we're really one situation away from winning those matches and, you know, give credit to Iowa. They went out and they won those tough positions that we talk about all the time. Uh, we tell these kids in a tight match, there's going to be a situation where you're either going to get tough and win the position and win the match. Or you're going to kind of, you know, get out tough and lose that position. And we lost all four um, in four matches. And we felt if we won those four positions, the outcome would have been a little different. Uh, but you know what? They learned. Now they, they learn what it's going to be like in the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament uh, to win that tough 3-2 match or come back and win a 6-5 match. So uh, we, uh, I'm glad Iowa had us on the schedule. I'm glad we got the rest of them. I'm glad they got that feel of a, of a quality opponent who uh, has the tradition of, of, of winning and um, and now it's, it's, it's go time and they know what to expect, uh, throughout the rest of the second semester in the championship season, the big 12s and the NCAA tournament. I think the question begs to be uh, asked coach. And that is how did Iowa get on your schedule? How did you get on theirs knowing your past relationship with the brands? No, no. See, that's a mistake. I, I get along with those guys real well. I always have, uh, you know, and, um, you know what, you, you always see everybody arguing and fighting and this and that. But um, that's just competitiveness. You know, what you see on the mat is not is not real relationships. Um, I'm, I'm friends with those guys. I respect those guys. Um, uh, and, and I give them a lot of credit. Um, they're, they're winners. And, uh, you know, when you're, you, I've always had to chase those guys my whole career. You know, when they had McElravey, they were training McElravey. And then they were Bill Zaddick. Throughout my whole career, I've had to chase those guys. So I've studied them. 
um, and I've got close to them, and I want to know how they think, and I want to, and, and, and they've turned out to be great friends um, who I've uh, who I've looked up to, and uh, and so there's a little bit of friendship, and uh, you know, a little bit of uh, let's get on the schedule. We're, they know we're going to come in there and fight, and I think they like when uh, people come in and will fight and test their guys, and um, and, and it's turned out to be a good little thing, and uh, I'm excited. Hopefully, we can stay on the schedule and and keep doing this. I think it's great for the sport. Uh, when they come to Brookings and we get 4,100 people in the stands, and uh, and it's great for our kids to go into Carver Hawkeye into that historic arena and go in there and fight with those guys. And uh, it's uh, it's an exciting time for our program, and I'm um, thankful for those guys. And uh, like I said, Tom and Terry, my friends, and um, and there's a healthy relationship and a healthy ri- rivalry there. I love it. And by the way, kudos to your announcer, who I heard was asking people to scooch in, move together to accommodate even more people so you could achieve that record crowd of 4,100 plus and those that were standing, by the way. There were a lot of folks that I fear weren't counted, but 4,100, not a bad place, Coach. That's a good number. Yeah, it was. You know what? We uh, Last year we broke the attendance record. I just saw this the other day. I was looking through my photos on my phone. And I took a photo to remind me we had 1,087 people in the stands for West Virginia. Uh, and that was our record. And then Iowa State came in this year, and we had 1,800. Uh, so so for us to go from 1,000 to 1,800 uh, to almost 4,100 is uh, just shows you what how great our community is in Brookings and how great our marketing people are and how great my administration is to allow us to uh, go out and do these crazy promotions and put put cardboard cutouts of our wrestlers and high V and Subway and down in Cubbies and Really, really, you know, just just work hard about trying to get people in the stands and then putting a good product on the mat so the fans are fired up about what they're coming to see. And uh, kudos to our fans for showing up. Yeah, they, a lot of people have seen a wrestling match show up. So uh, it was a great night, even though the outcome of the match wasn't where we wanted. We learned a lot, and the town of Brookings showed up in, uh, in full force. Brookings and the fans of SDSU. We're talking with head coach Chris Bono. Chris, we move ahead. The results speak for themselves. Northern State, Dakota Wesley, and Augustana all felt the power of the team, and it was 28 8 over Northern State, 56 0 over Dakota Wesleyan, and 37 6 with Augustana. This gives your team, I think, an opportunity to, to have a healthy look at itself, knowing that they can go in and just absolutely dominate. Well, yeah, and, you know, that's a good little deal we have for the state of South Dakota. Those are all our, um, our, our college programs in the state. So for us to get together um, down to Sanford Pentagon and uh, wrestle each other is, uh, is, is really what you call trying to grow the sport. And that's what we're uh, – we've got to try that. We've got to grow it. We've got to um, showcase it. And it's good for all programs. It's good for the high school kids in South Dakota to realize that they've got uh, somewhere to go and wrestle after high school at one of those schools. Coach, looking ahead, Midlands Championships, Tony Hager, myself, Steve Foster will be there, of course, and uh, uh, Stephen Stonebreaker. We've got a full crew coming in to broadcast the Midlands Championships on TakedownWrestle.com, uh, and uh, you'll find it on Facebook as well. But Midlands Championships, I asked Sandy Stevens this yesterday. What does it mean to you? Well, it's the only tournament to go to over Christmas. That's how I was, uh, I was brought up. Uh, it's a, it's a, you know, I wrestled in that thing a million times and, uh, it's a very prestigious tournament and fun tournament. And, um, you know, to me, that's all I know. So it was, uh, it, it means a lot. And, uh, I believe that's where, where, where everybody should be wrestling over Christmas break. Being in the big 12 coach, uh, it's, it's a different kind of, and I don't, I don't know that pressure is the right word, but it's a different kind of attitude, a different kind of swagger. You guys showed up well last year at the big 12 tournament for the first time. I expect you'll probably come in, uh, with, uh, with an even different kind of walk this year. What are your thoughts about, uh, your program within the big 12? Oh, we love it, you know, and especially this year, Oklahoma State's number one team in the country. You've got the number one team uh, in your conference, and that's what you're, you know, you get to see them in a dual meet. You get to see them in the in the Big 12 tournament. So that's that's what you want to do. You want you want to expose your kids to the best of the best. So when you show up at the NCAA tournament, you're ready to go. And um, you know, the Big 12 tournament, we're so thankful to be in the conference, and uh, our kids are thankful, and the conference is just wonderful, uh, professional, and uh, we feel that we're growing it, and it's going to be the best conference in the country. Um, if not, if it isn't already. Uh, and I think this year, if you look up and down the rankings, there's a ton of, uh, of, of kids ranked in the Big 12, uh, a lot more than last year. And it just shows that um, our affiliate programs, that, that uh, the old WWC, are really doing a great job now of getting their programs better and getting ranked kids. And, and, it's, and, it's, and the reason that's being is really because we are in the Big 12. So many advantages of being in the Big 12 
It's helping us get more, uh, you know, it's helping us recruit better kids who are then in turn getting ranked, which helps us get more qualifiers into the NCAA tournament. Chris Bono, our guest on the Nike Hot Seat today. Coach, looking further ahead, Boise State, Northern Colorado, University of Oklahoma, and Utah Valley all coming to play in Brookings. And then finally, that North-South rivalry, the North Dakota State team will come to Brookings, South Dakota for a, a 2 o'clock uh, match. Let's talk about that because, quite frankly, we see uh, uh, Roger Kish and, and Chris Bono and company, uh, that, that conflict there between the North and the South as being one of uh, both legendary status and even looking forward, a, a, great, a great conflict between these two teams. Yeah, that's a great rivalry, too. Uh, that NDSU-SDSU rivalry in every sport goes back uh, really, really far. Uh, I didn't really understand it until we actually were able to beat them last year, um, uh, actually twice. So when And, and after that win, it was, uh, it was, uh, we, I heard from uh, many, many, many people from different sports, uh, old and young, about how great it is to beat, beat, the, beat NDSU. So uh, I understand the rivalry. And uh, oh, we don't ever want to lose that thing ever again. We have a uh, traveling trophy that goes with it, the border bell. So uh, that's, that's, that's a date that's always circled on our schedule. And that's a date that, again, we'll pack that uh, arena. It's in Brookings. And um, it'll be a fun rivalry. That's a Sunday, by the way, fans. You want to get on the website, follow along at gojacks.com. Nobody's promoting his program more and more often than Chris Bono, and there's a reason why there's a lot of pride that goes into being Chris Bono. Uh, you're down in Florida with your family. Your father, of course, uh, down in Florida. You came from Florida, but you figured out that uh, playing around in snow is not a bad thing. Well, it's a quick trip. My old man's birthday is, uh, is, is here. It's really not even about Christmas, so it's a quick trip. We're back home here in a day, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's, we don't get together, and I had a free day to get down here, and, you know, it, uh, it is nice to be down here in the 70s for 48 hours, and then, uh, you know, we've got guys still training back in Brookings right now, so uh, we've got to get back home and, and keep these guys going. But, uh, hey, you know, the snow is the snow. The cold is the cold. There is no such thing as cold weather, Scott, just weak people. So, uh, <laughs> It's, it's go time. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for Midlands. There's no time to really be in Florida vacation. And so, um, you know, that we'll save that for a later day. But we're, we're down here to celebrate my old man's birthday. And then we'll, um, you know, and then I'm going to get back home and get back to work. Ranked seventh, at least a couple of weeks ago, was Seth Gross. Where is Seth Gross in your mind mentally? Where is he? Uh, this, this, this guy is unbelievable, you know. And um, I can tell you right now, uh, I've been around a couple of wrestlers uh, that have his kind of mentality. Uh, everybody says, what makes this kid tick? This kid's on the same level um, as, as, as one other guy I've ever seen in terms of being competitive. Uh, and, 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 and the only other more competitive guy I've ever seen is Kale Sanderson. You know, the, you know if, you're, if you're gross, is, 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 is as competitive as, as anybody I've ever seen. And I think that's kind of his, um, his, his little X factor uh, that this guy doesn't want to lose in anything. And, um, you know, he's in other areas, he's got a lot to make up, uh, you know, technically, tactically and things like that. But you go up against a guy that does not want to lose in anything and he's going to be tough to beat no matter what. And I think that's kind of what's separating this guy right now is, um, is A, he thinks he's going to be the national champion. B, he's working like he wants to be the national champion. Uh, and C, he just doesn't ever want to lose. Um, so so you, you throw all those things together and uh, you got a guy that's uh, doing a real good job. Coach, each one of your uh, athletes deserves to be talked about, but time allowing, the one final I will ask you about is a former Johnston Dragon, 141-pounder, Henry Pohlmeyer. Uh, he did not do well against the University of Iowa in that match. What did you see, though, from a coaching perspective for the redshirt freshman? Uh, we love the guy. Uh, we love Henry. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a freshman. You know, you know freshmen are freshmen. You know, you don't know what you're going to get day in and day out. We preach consistency, but he's a freshman. And uh, this kid brings it every day. Work ethic, uh, great student, pharmacy. He's going to be a, uh, he's a, he's a pharmacy major, one of the toughest majors in our, um, in our school, at, at a school that's known, um, you know, for their pharmacy program. So he's doing it both on the mat, off the mat. Uh, very, very, very dedicated, do whatever you ask. And uh, we expect huge things from Henry over the next, you know, three and a half years. And uh, we love him, and uh, glad he chose SDSU. And, uh, you know, expect Henry to hit his stride here soon, and uh, hopefully we can uh, get him a lot more wins and uh, get him to the national tournament this year. Coach, we're looking forward to seeing you December 29th and 30th in action in Evanston, Illinois, at the Midlands Championships. Uh, a tip of the cap to uh, Kenny Kraft, of course, at Ken Kraft Midlands Championships. It's been a pleasure talking with you today, Coach, and we appreciate the opportunity. 
All right. Thanks for having me. Always, always enjoy it. Our very special guest today, Chris uh, Chris Bono, the head coach of the SDSU uh, squad, those mighty Jackrabbits. Look for information online at gojacks.com. Ticket availability there as well. For all of us at Takedown, I'm Scott Casper, wishing each and every one of you a very happy holiday season.